Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel again. My name is Jean-Paul Thuray Chimier. Today's date is November 3rd, 2022. Today I am going to talk about Rwanda as a dangerous neighbor in the East African community. Last time I did mention that Rwanda was a problem to East African integration. And this is because of the history or the practice the history of Rwanda meddling into other nations and the neighbors' affairs, not just meddling, but also destabilizing their security. I did mention, I did give an example to Burundi, Uganda, and Tanzania. And also, actually, I did mention the fact that Rwanda did assassinate dissidents in Nairobi. By the way, Kagame never denied doing that. In fact, I mean, I'm talking about the event in Nairobi because Nairobi is less talked about when it comes to Rwanda's influence or infiltrations or destabilization in the region. But in 1996, 1997, the government of Rwanda, under the directives of uh, President Kagame, did assassinate dissidents Two of them, one was a, a colonel, another one was a former minister, Sethi Sendashonga and Colonel Lizinde, respectively. So, Rwanda never denied that it did, that, that the Rwanda government assassinated at least Sendashonga. During a government retreat, I believe that that's when Kagame said that, uh, yes, you need to understand the issue that I had with Senda Shonga. And the reason why he was, he was assassinated was because he was seen or he was monitored being in connection or in touch with the brother of President Museveni. I have this speech. Maybe I'll play this speech, this segment al alone in my next, uh, pro uh, my next program, but not today. Today, I want to come back to James Kabarebe addressing the youth in 2018. He was the Minister of Defense at the time. And this event took place in Nyagatari. It's eastern part of Rwanda. And um, he was addressing the youth there. And during the address, or when he was addressing the youth, he did mention the fact that Uganda is a hostile neighbor to Rwanda and advised, and not just advised, that's not appropriate word. The appropriate word is warned against going into Uganda. He was very, very angry. But the video is nowhere to be seen now because I think it was deleted. But the event took place in April of 2018. I have a report from, or an article from Chimp's report, Chimp reports, quoting this newspaper in Rwanda. I will note also that a Chimp reports does mention the fact that the video isn't available, <coughs> excuse me, but the news is authentic. It did happen. It did occur. And this website, the news website in Rwanda, by the name of Ukwezi, which is the first that broke the news. I think he had a video and they took it down for reason that I don't know, but other news media in Rwanda 
reported the same event and the same statement, same speech by General Kabarebe, who was the Minister of Defense at the time, saying that, uh, and I will quote, Rwandan, why are you going to sniffing in Uganda? He did say sniffing. I think it will be it will be better, I mean, it will be appropriate if I can say exactly what he, what he said in Kenya, Rwanda. He did say that, Banya Rwanda, Mujanwa Nichi Guhuna Huna. Why do you go to Uganda to sniff, sniff like dog, like dogs? So the newspaper, Chimp Reports, translated the speech as, or the soundbite as, why do you go to Uganda to scavenge, like a scavenging in Uganda? That is because of um, of lack of a better word. Scavenging, it is different to the guhuna huna that Kabarebi mentioned. Guhuna huna, it is something done by a dog trying to smell something to see if he can find something to eat. Maybe for human being, you can call it the same thing. But James Kabarebe forgot that he did scavenge. He was a scavenger in Uganda. If that is what, how he described going to Uganda. He did. He was a scavenger for a long, long time. He did benefit from scavenging in Uganda. He went to Makerere University. I'm not sure that he graduated, but I know that he did attend Makerere University. So this was just in response to a hostile relationship, relations by both countries. And you remember that the border between the two countries was eventually closed and the reason that were uh, the reason that were given by authorities, they were contra- they, they were contradictory to each other. Like Jim, I mean, the foreign affairs minister said the reason why they closed the border to Gatuna was because of construction projects. That's not what Kagame said during um, a swearing ceremony in the parliament when he was swearing in new members of his cabinet. He did say that they did close the borders because of Rwandan being targeted for harassment and incarceration. The Rwandan people did not mind going to Uganda. But that happened when Ugandans were arresting a lot of Rwandans because of suspicion of spy, spying. And remember, how do you call this uh, website? I mean, this software by Israeli agency, Pegasus. You have to remember that Rwanda is also suspected to have spied on authorities in Uganda using Pegasus. So Uganda was justified in tracking down these presumed spies. And actually, to be honest with you, they were not treated like spies, as spies. They were treated better than Rwandan people, Rwandan journalists in jail in Rwanda, in their own motherland, accused of sparing, I mean, smearing uh, or spreading rumors. The so-called spies, which there were like a number of them were arrested in Uganda. It was, there was a crackdown. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. There was a crackdown in Uganda to try to identify these spies. And Kagame was not happy, was not happy about it. He did spend a lot of time talk, talking about 
um, one one gentleman. I'm not a gentleman. I will not call it a, call him a gentleman. His name is Rene Rutagungira, who was definitely a spy for the Rwandan government, and Kagame was so troubled by the fact that this guy was held in Uganda and being questioned. And uh, he did mention he did mention him in his name and tried to sympathize with the fact that he can't see the, his family, the family can't see him. But I wish he was consistent when it comes to those he retains or he has in his own his own um jail so this is not just to try to dig uh dirt between i mean from rwanda in regard to uganda i just want to remind the east african community that they have a problem with this neighbor I am going to read, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to read it. Uh, Ange, Ange read this article from Chimps Report for you. And this article outlines, I mean, summarizes, summarizes this event in Nyagatari where James Kabare, unfortunately, we can't see, we can't find the video, was talking about, was warning Uganda, I mean, Rwandans not to travel to Uganda. And I do believe till today that the government of Rwanda, despite these Muhozi's visits to Rwanda, these officials, they still have, they still hold negative sentiment towards Uganda. It's not just Uganda. It is very, very difficult to be Kagame's friend. Not, never mind being a friend. Just being a good neighbor, you would you would assume you would think that Uganda would have been the best, you know, the best best neighbor of all of East African community because Uganda, the, all these RPF was born in Uganda. And I remember that President Museveni was honored for his role nurturing RPF. So let me let me let me play this. Um, let, let's let's uh, uh, let, let's listen in as Ange reads this article from Chiefs Reports in two thousand from two thousand eighteen. Rwanda's powerful defense minister, General James Kabarebe, has urged his countrymen to stop scavenging in Uganda, the Rwanda media reports. Addressing about 3,000 graduates of a political program known as Ingando in Nyagatare on Wednesday, Kabarebe expressed disappointment that Rwandans continue to guhunahuna in Uganda. Guhunahuna is a Kinyaranda term used to describe dogs searching for leftovers. Kabarebe, according to Rwandan news website Okwezi, told participants drawn from different parts of the country that the neighboring countries of DRC, Burundi, and Uganda don't wish Rwanda well. Quote, They are always jealous of Rwanda's future and how well our people are progressing, he said. The defense minister, who hails from Ibanda, western Uganda, gave an example of Rwandans who were arrested and reportedly tortured in Uganda to claim that was evidence of envy. He asked his countrymen to, quote, build your country instead of scavenging in Uganda because they are not better off than us, end quote. The website has pictures of General Kabarebe addressing the crowd but did not post the audio or video recording of his speech. The Rwandan government is yet to distance itself from Kabarebe's speech. 
A former co combatant in the NRA, Kabarebe participated in the RPF war that ushered President Kagame into power in 1994. He would later take part in Rwanda's military operations in DRC that toppled President Mobutu and helped Laurent Kabila Sr. to take power. Rwanda's ambassador to Uganda, Major General Frank Mugambaye, did not respond to our communication seeking clarification on General Kabarebe's controversial speech. Foreign Affairs Permanent Secretary Ambassador Mogoya could not comment on the development as he was reportedly busy with preparations for the Northern Corridor Summit in Nairobi, Kenya this week. But Mogoya recently said, Uganda's relations with Uganda are okay, irrespective of a myriad of bilateral challenges. This is not the first time the minister was being accused of making disparaging remarks against Uganda. Since September 2007, Kabarebe has upped his rhetoric against Uganda in his addresses to several groups of youth, women, traders, and RPF cadres. During these meetings, Kabarebe reportedly describes Uganda as an enemy country. He is said to have added that while President Museveni outwardly supports Rwanda, his actions don't support his statements. At one of the meetings held at the new RPF headquarters in Gasabo, Kabarebe was quoted as saying Uganda supports Burundi, which is home to Rwandan dissidents. Ugandan observers have since expressed fears. The defense minister is executing part of a wider plan to mobilize the population against Uganda. But this week marked a continuation of Kabarebe's rhetoric as he insisted that there was nothing good to write home about Uganda. Quote, See how Uganda is and every day you continue going there. You are arrested, detained, and harassed all the time, but why don't you listen? Our embassy in Uganda is no longer doing anything other than spending all the time looking for Rwandans who have been arrested and beaten. End quote. He observed. Quote, you keep scavenging in Uganda looking for what? Why don't you build your country instead of going to Uganda to be beaten? What do you want there? We lived in Uganda as refugees, left Uganda and shed our blood liberating your country. Let them also come here, end quote. He wondered why everything that happens in Uganda, such as kidnaps and murders, are attributed to Rwandans or Rwanda. Quote, whatever happens in Uganda, it is Rwanda, said Kabarebe, adding, if any Ugandan is murdered for their reasons or by their government, they say it's Rwandans. Whatever happens, I think they will reach a point where a Ugandan gets flu of, or malaria and they will say it's Rwanda, end quote. Kabarebe said, This is because they, Uganda, are not happy with their good leadership and level of development. That's envy, nothing else. But what do we even want there? Why don't we build their country for others also to come here? If Ugandans also want to come, let them come. We shall not stop them. Ugandan security services have previously arrested and detained Rwandans suspected of espionage, kidnaps, illegal repatriation of refugees, and also threatening national security. Uganda and Rwanda are close neighbors interlinked by trade, intermarriages, and blood relations among their people. Rwandans usually travel to Uganda to visit friends, relatives, and also search for business opportunities and jobs. Born in 1959, Kabarebe has his education in Uganda and graduated in economics and political science at Makareda University. He was commissioned in the Ugandan army in 1989. Kabarebe was the private secretary and aide-de-camp of Major General Paul Kagame. During the Liberation War, he became commander of the High Command Unit at Mulindi. Later, this unit became the Republican Guard under Kagame's leadership. Kabarebe served as Chief of Staff in President Laurent Kabila's government before being dismissed at the height of intense tensions between Rwanda and DRC. After commanding operations in DRC, Kabarebe was appointed Chief of Defense Staff in 2002 before being elevated to Defense Minister. During a bilateral meeting at State House in Tebe, President Museveni said, On security matters, 
There is no fundamental problem between Rwanda and Uganda. A number of incidents that are being com commented about in the media, many would be properly addressed if only there was better communication. We have phones. We should talk more. On his part, Rwanda President Paul Kagame said if there were, quote, any issues that need resolving, the respective agencies and the two countries have been urged to talk to each other, find out the facts, and agree on action to be taken, end quote. He added, I can say with great satisfaction that we were able to agree on a number of important things for the benefit of our countries and region, better communication, working together more deeply, and sharing facts regularly will allow us to take better decisions, visiting President Paul Kagame said. So, uh, at least you understand that uh, this this sentiment, negative sentiment between the two countries did not come from nowhere. And this was not the beginning of it. So the recently, I did read um, another article from Chimp's report or Chimp reports when uh, Ambassador Carrega, Vincent Carrega from I mean, Rwandan ambassador to DRC was expelled after the M23 RDF, I should say. I never believed that this is M23 because now it's more evident that it is not M23. There is no way M23 in such short time can occupy a vast territory, like Ruchuru territory, Bunagana territory, and actually now trying to to fight to retake Goma. They did they did that before, and that was in 2012, and that was also with the help of Rwanda. So, because of the international community pressure, Rwanda advised. M23 to retreat and evacuate the city of Goma. Even today, there, there are evidence suggesting that Rwanda is, RDF is fighting in Congo. It's not M23 as Rwanda suggests. For, recent, for instance, the most recent, uh, most recent instance was when Rwanda condemned the FRDC to resume fighting against M23 on, on DRC territory. There is no justification of that statement, of those statements, by the spokesperson, the deputy spokesperson of the uh, Rwandan government, Mr. Alain Mukurarinda, and the deputy East African Community Minister, I mean, the Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, also in charge of East African Community, Mr. Nchuti Manasse, they both made statements condemning the attacks by FRDC to, <laughs> to M23 in the, the inside the Arab Congo, alleging that Congo government or FRDC has violated the agreement, Angola agreement of ceasefire. See, I, I, I don't know how to explain this. The fight took place in DRC against, against what Rwandan government said it is M23 rebel, rebel movement. I say that is not, it is not, it is RDF fighting in Congo under the umbrella of M23. But it's not just that. Even the fact that when, when Congo and M23 are supposed to be discussing ceasefire and withdraw from territory occupied by the M23, do you know who represents M23? Do you know who attends those dialogues in Angola? And do you know who does not attend those dialogues? Rwandan government attends all the dialogue 
in Angola, in Luanda. M23 never attended those dialogues. But they seem content the Rwanda government is representing their interest. So there are evidence the Rwandan government is fighting in Congo. Another article actually from Chimp Reports as well did mention the fact that there are about 3,000 I will say there may be more, 3,000, maybe the 3,000 occupy, they occupy the territories, but there are more that comes and go, in my view. So this article was after Karega was expelled from DRC. So the, the article cites evidence of some thousand of armed forces from DR, from RDF crossing into Congo. So I will let you listen to this article uh, read to us by Ange, and then uh, we'll come back in a few seconds. The president of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix Tshisekedi, has ordered the expulsion of the Rwandan ambassador over Kigali's alleged support of the M23 rebels. The decision was taken during a Security Council meeting chaired by Chisekedi in Kinshasa on Saturday evening. Quote, The Defense Council chaired by Felix Chisekedi decides on the expulsion of the Rwandan ambassador within 48 hours, end quote, said DRC government spokesperson Patrick Muyaya. The development signals the worsening of relations between the two neighbors. A reliable Congolese source told Chimp reports on Sunday morning that Chisekedi took the decision following intelligence reports that Rwanda sent over 3,000 elite forces to Rutshuru to help the M23 rebels. The source further said Chisekedi was upset on being told that the commander of Rwanda's special forces had been cited in Rutshuru and another senior Rwandan commander had created a base in Musanze to help the M23. It was also claimed that the Rwandan special forces had occupied key strategic bases, including Rumangabo, to conduct more attacks on DRC forces. According to an official who attended the meeting, this intelligence angered Chisekedi, who decided to kick out Karega. Chimp Reports was unable to verify these accusations when we posted this article. Rwanda has previously denied supporting M23, saying the rebellion is an internal security issue with Kinshasa, which Kinshasa must address. Chisekedi yesterday directed DRC security services to restrict the movement of Rwandans to DRC territory. Officials said Chisekedi will also make a national address on the conflict in eastern DRC. The Defense Council also warned Congolese against acts of violence, stigmatization, and hate speech against Rwandan-speaking communities to, quote, avoid giving justification for the enemy's actions, end quote. Chisekedi is facing mounting political pressure to stabilize North Kivu as he prepares to seek re-election in next year's presidential race. Two United Nations peacekeepers were on, Saturday, were on Saturday injured by mortar fire and two others by small arms during the attacks by the M23 rebels in Kiwanja, in the territory of Rutshuru, North Kivu province. Quote, The mission strongly condemns the hostile actions of the 20, M23 and their serious consequences on the civilian pop populations. It calls on this rebel group to immediately seize all belligerents and warns that it stands ready to retaliate vigorously in the event of new aggression on its bases, end quote, said Monusco in a statement on Saturday. Rwanda recently said in a statement that the Congolese forces, quote, build up to renew attacks on M23, a Congolese armed group, is in violation of the agreed regional security mechanisms, including the Nairobi and Luanda processed, end quote. It added, Quote, Continued public incitement on the basis of ethnicity, use of heavy weaponry, targeting of Rwanda's border zone, and baseless accusations against Rwanda are unacceptable. End quote. 
Kinshasa responded to the same statement, saying it was a clear, quote, an irrefutable admission, end quote, that Rwanda is backing the M23. Why else would a foreign government defend an armed terrorist group operating in another state? How can a national army be denied its legitimate duty fulfilled its constitutional mission of protecting its population and the eagle institutions of the Republic against terrorists whose only objective is to sow death and despair, said the DRC government. The attitude of the Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, sufficiently demonstrates his strategy of permanent interference in the internal affairs of the DRC to maintain a climate of terror in the East, thus enabling widespread looting, which has been recognized around the world. Kigali accuses Kinshasa of integrating the anti-Rwanda FDLR militia and DRC's forces and occasionally shelling Rwandan territory. Welcome back. And a few days ago, I did also read an article from the East African, from Kenya. The title was, I'm going to read the whole article here. So we're going to read the whole article here. So I don't need to tell you the title, but the, 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 the writer or the author was concerned about the, uh, was concerned about East African, how and how they could avoid escalation of violence, the East African community. Imagine East African community member. And this is not like an external force, an external threat towards or against East African community member. This is a threat from within. And I do believe, like, as I said, this, this kind of practice it is not new to the government of Rwanda. It, government of Rwanda is not trying this interference, this destabilization of security in Congo for the first time. It is, it is not the first time, and it's not just in Congo. It has happened in almost every member state, probably, except in South Sudan, maybe because it's far away from Rwanda. If it was close, if they were a neighbor, like they share the border, if they share the border, I can guarantee you that it would have happened the same way. It did happen to Burundi. It did happen to Uganda twice or third, I mean, three times. And Tanzania, Congo several, several times. So this is not new. Now the article in the East African is concerned, the author at least, is concerned uh, uh, about how this East African can avoid violence in East African, um, when, in, in Congo, escalation of violence. There is already violence. There's no way this can be called avoiding escalation of violence. Maybe a chaos, a chaos. But there is no other way, as I said in my previous segments or my previous programs, th you have to address the elephant in the room. The appeasement, the appeasement approach to this issue is not going to solve any, is not going to solve a problem. Kagame need to be dealt with. He needs to be told. He needs to be told that he is the problem to East Africa. But he's so spoiled. He's so spoiled, spoiled and everybody, every leader in the region, in the East African community knows that that he's so spoiled and they can't tell him the truth. And he lies. He lies to their face. He's going to create M23. He's going to create CNDP. He's going to create DRRDC. He's going to create another, another proxy, proxy army. 
So the East African stand, I mean, not standby brigade, the East African regional force, so the government of Rwanda said they don't, they are not in Congo. So, which means they will not defend M23. If they do, then it will be a declaration of war against Congo. And then the East African community, they need to do something. They need to do something. And the something is to address the issue and return fire and silence the fire from the external threat. Kagame cannot now, cannot now claim that this is his force in Congo. So it is known as M23. Let me tell you. So he was, Kagame want to negotiate and try to have these men and women, these rebels, the so-called rebels in the region, integrated into Congolese force. And what amount of work to investigate every one of them, to identify his identity, to determine whether these are Rwandans or a Congolese refugee, refugees as he claims, he claimed them to be. So I'll let you listen to this, um, to this article. But this is just for your information that something was talked, I mean, was written about it. Uh, but I think this is, uh, the approach has to be different. The leaders of East African community, if really they mean business and they mean integration, they have to address the issue. And they're addressing the issue, they have to approach the issue the same way Kagame is approaching it. They need to silence these fights. There are number of ways, multiple ways you can solve the issue of armed groups in Congo, other armed groups, but not those that are being sponsored by a member state. Because those that are known, but these are going to remain because they're not, they're not claiming, Kagame is not claiming that this, this is his own army. No, he's saying that these, these are rebels. So even if you manage to deal with this, with this group, then he's going to create another one. So I'll let you read, I um, mean, uh, listen to this article uh, read to us by Ange again, and um, I'll be right back. The East African community is facing renewed pressure to avert simmering violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo and save the various tracks of diplomatic processes launched in Nairobi and Luanda aimed at solving multi-layers of conflict. But amid renewed fighting between the Congolese army and rebel group M23, the regional bloc has signaled that military action in the DRC will be the last resort. Officials said they are concentrating on pushing the armed groups to join the negotiating table instead. From November 2nd, Nairobi is expected to gather the various warring factions in a second attempt to convince them to abandon war for political talks. The challenge, however, is that Kinshasa has said it will not accept M23 to the table, saying the group is being externally financed to continue the war. A mostly Congolese Tutsi group, the M23 resumed fighting in late 2021 after lying dormant for years. It has since captured swaths of territory in North Kivu province, including the strategic town of Bunagana on the Ugandan border in June. The group's resurgence has destabilized regional relations in Central Africa, with the DRC accusing Rwanda of backing the militia. Rwanda was still fighting these claims this week. On Friday, French news agency AFP reported that Congolese troops clashed with the M23 rebels around a strategic highway in the east. Quote, the M23 fired a lot of bullets into our village, so we are forced to flee for our lives. The AFP quoted Anita Sikuzote, a mother of six. 
No official toll was given, but residents said at least 10 people had been killed since October 23rd and dozens more injured. Farhan Haq, spokesperson for MONUSCO, the UN peacekeeping, peacekeeping mission in the DRC, said, at least nine civilians were killed during clashes. The front line between Congolese troops and M23 rebels has, had been calm in recent weeks until last week when clashes erupted again. On October 23rd, M23 fighters captured the village of Hamujenga in North Kivu's Rutshuru area, according to local officials. The village lies about four kilometers from the RN2, a strategic highway leading to the provincial capital, Goma. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and the DRC said this week that about 34 1,500 people had fled the Rutshuru region. Fighting between soldiers and the M23 spread to the highway itself on Thursday. Quote, Clashes are ongoing on the RN2, said local official Justin Komayombi, who added that the road was blocked because M23 fighters were in the settlements of Kako and Kalingera. Samson Rukira, a civil society leader in Rochuru, confirmed the road had been blocked. The situation is tense, he said. The Kivu security tracker, a respected violence monitor, also said that M23 activity had cut access to a portion of the highway. The militia is occupying the settlements of Rubare, Karengera, and Kako, it added, which all lie on the highway. The Kenya talks, known as the Nairobi process, have been endorsed by the East African community, which began tackling the Congo conflict under the chair of former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mr. Kenyatta is now the peace envoy for Kenya, and new President William Ruto has promised to seek a lasting solution in the Congo. The East African understands that the the November 2nd meeting is being planned as a priority over the proposed military deployment in the Eastern DRC, even though officials say both dialogue and military action are still on the table. Quote, the priority for the Nairobi process is political and not military, one official familiar with the ESC efforts told the East African this week. The idea is to avoid any military action and that the military deployment is merely to give confidence to the political decisions that have been and will be taken moving forward. Any military action will be a last resort. Both dialogue and military action, though, may be challenged by the re-emergence of a public spat between Rwanda and DRC. On October 24th, Rwanda issued a statement dismissing allegations of fueling M23 rebel attacks, saying the Congolese forces build up to renew attacks on M23 is in violation of the agreed regional security mechanisms, including the Nairobi and Luanda processes. Quote, Continued public incitement on the basis of ethnicity, use of heavy weaponry, targeting of Rwanda's border zone, and Baseless accusations against Rwanda are unacceptable, Kigali said in a statement. In response, Kinshasa expressed surprise that Rwanda continued its, quote, strategy of permanent interference in the internal affairs of the DRC to maintain a climate of terror in this part of the country and thus continue the work of plundering that is recognized worldwide, end quote. How can we understand that a foreign government takes the defense of an armed group, moreover a terrorist, in another state? How can we want to deny a national army its legitimate duty to fulfill its constitutional mission to protect its population and the legal institutions of the republic against terrorists whose only objective is to sow death and desolation? Asked Congolese government spokesperson, Information Minister Patrick Muyaya. The resumption of fighting runs counter to a positive trend in the reproachment between the DRC and Rwanda, a few weeks after the ESC adopted a roadmap to quell rising tensions in the region. The roadmap under the leadership of Kenya dictated a ceasefire to allow consultations between the DRC and armed groups as well as establishment of a regional force. On Thursday, the U.S. raised concerns about the renewed fighting and accused Rwanda of fueling the conflict by arming M23. Quote, 
State support of armed groups is unacceptable, and we'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate our concern about Rwanda's support to M23, end quote. Ineke Margaret Stoneham, a press officer at the U.S. Embassy in Kinshasa, told the East African. The United States supports the African-led mediation efforts to address the regional tensions in eastern DRC, including those efforts led by the East African community, Kenya, and Angola. We encourage countries in the region to work together to restore peace, security, and trust while respecting each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Rwanda has denied these allegations in the past, but its public defense of the group has miffed Kinshasa. The new tensions may hurt a mediation by Angolan President Jao Lorenzo, who had led Rwanda President Paul Kagame and DRC's Felix Tshisekedi in July to sign a commitment to dialogue and diplomatic channels. They may also affect the planned deployment of regional forces. In September, EAC Secretary General Peter Mathuki and DRC's Deputy Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs Christophe Lutundula signed in Kinshasa the Status of Forces Agreement for this regional force. Quote, the agreement envisaged an initial deployment of the ESC Joint Regional Force for a period of six months after which the deployment will be evaluated, the Dr. Mathuki said. The East African understands the forces would need at least four months from the day of the agreement to deploy, could extend their stay by at least two months, and would need another four months to disengage. This week, both Nairobi and Kinshasa rejected claims that Kenyan troops initially deployed to the DRC had withdrawn. The Kenyan government instead said there has been no formal deployment as it is waiting parliamentary approval. Officials said the deployment would be based on the ESC protocol, reasoning that this would provide constitutional cover to circumvent seeking UN approval. Under the Nairobi process, however, ESC officials say progress has been made and this will be regardless of whether Rwanda and DRC quarrel or not. Quote, that there is still fighting and bickering around the presence and the actions of the M23 is neither here nor there, an official said. It is the reality in the field. This does not signal failure. It signals the challenge that we must take up. The ESC is categorical that its mission will not be about military action from the outset. Instead, it will be a deployment for presence with armed groups still being persuaded to abandon fighting. Ideally, the military force is to be supported through the ESC Peace Fund, a pool of finances that is open for contributions from across Africa and beyond. Analysts say the main hindrance to regional efforts remains the political climate in Congo ahead of the presidential election in 2023. While President Felix, Felix Tshisekedi has maintained that the country will go to the polls in 2023 when he is expected to run for a second term, analysts say addressing the insecurity in eastern DRC may be used to postpone the elections, effectively extending Tshisekedi's term in office. The deployment of FARDC, however, could give President Chisekedi a chance to demonstrate that he has made progress in bringing stability to the country. For Rwanda, a defeated M23 could become a domestic problem, and Kigali would wish them to be active elsewhere. Quote, Regarding the planned East African Community Regional Force, we remind contributing countries of their obligation to notify these deployments to the UN, 1533 Sanctions Committee, Stoneham said. We also stress the need for the ESCRF to coordinate operations with the UN peacekeep peacekeeping mission so it can fulfill its mandate to protect civilians. End quote. The France and U.S. have previously asked the parties to withdraw from occupied positions since the resurgence of fighting, including the town of Bunagana. But M23 remains the political headache. Since the resurgence of the M23 attacks at the end of 2021 in North Kivu, Kinshasa and Kigali have been engaged in a diplomatic role at, inter at International for A, including the UN Security Council. 
At various Security Council meetings, the two countries have accused each other against the backdrop of the existence of rebel groups led by the M23 and the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, FDLR. If the diplomatic spat were to turn into a military escalation, it would derail external measures to pacify Eastern DRC. In October, the violence reached a peak causing massive displacement of civilians. The resumption of the war after two months of ceasefire has prompted Rwanda to accuse the DRC of military aggression. In a government statement issued on October 24th, Kigali said, Contrary to a to the assertions of the president of DRC that his country is focused on a diplomatic solution to the insecurity in eastern DRC, recent statements and actions show that the DRC government is decided on a course of continued military escalation. Rwanda further said that the Congolese army continues to operate alongside irregular armed militias, including the FDLR. The DRC ruled out any negotiations with the M23, which had been described as a terrorist movement. In the region, for the past 30 years, security issues have not ceased to damage relations between countries, particularly Rwanda and the Congo. The various economic agreements that some experts have presented as the ultimate solution have not succeeded in restoring true trust and peace. Meanwhile, the ESC summit has designated the facilitator to undertake the mediation in DRC and will work with special envoys to help parties negotiate. For Kenya, the deployment, the deployment will be significant because they will operate in an area where M23 is active. It is also the only troops contributor without a common border with the DRC.